Hi, I'm Dr. Deborah Rouse, and I wanted to show you today how to make homemade almond milk. It's a lot easier than you may think, and I'm gonna show you it step by step. First thing is you wanna start with the really clean hands. I just washed my hands. Now I have one cup of almonds here. Now I soak these almonds overnight, about eight to 10 hours. I rinse them with filtered water, and now they're ready to go. So just take these almonds, I add it to about six cups of filtered water and I put that all in my blender. And I'm just gonna go ahead and blend and puree until the almonds look really fine. Now I'm using a Vitamix blender which I absolutely love. You can use a regular blender too. Anything that's just gonna get those almonds ground up for, uh, as fine as they can be. So I would put it on the puree or your high, high on the Vitamix. It really doesn't take that long, that was it. And um, what I have here is I've prepared my mason jar and I have this wonderful tool and it's called a nut milk bag. You could use cheesecloth, but I tried that and I find um, if you have a nut milk bag, it makes this so much easier and you don't get any chunks of almonds um, filtering through, it's less messy and you can find those online or at some natural food stores. Very inexpensive too. So then you take your blended almonds and water and you, I usually do about half at a time. Pour it right through the nut milk bag. Uh, maybe I'll do a little bit more than half. And sometimes it can get a little bit messy, but I don't really worry about it. And then I just press out the liquid into the mason jar. Then I get a pull through to get that pulp through the opening of the mason jar. And then I always joke with my kids, I feel like I'm milking a cow when I do this. It's a little, uh, it's a little funny to watch or to look at, but you see how quick and easy it is um, to make this. And I gotta tell you, it is delicious. Not that I don't like almond milk that I can buy at the store. Certainly I do that. Um, in a pinch or if I haven't soaked the almonds and or I want large quantities. I tend to hoard this stuff, honestly. You know, I am very protective over my almond milk. I don't know why, but uh, I just, I just love it. Okay, so that's squeezed out. And then I take the pulp and I save it in this bowl. Then I'll just do my second pouring. Brings it almost all the way to the top. Press it out, squeeze it out. And I end up with about between six and seven cups of almond milk. So it gives me about a cup for every day. Okay, so we're just about there. I'm gonna put this pulp into the bowl here. And put those in the sink to be washed. Okay, my almond milk's all ready to go. So that's going to be refrigerated and I'm left with this uh, pulp. So I found this great recipe when I was doing the raw thing for some crackers and I've sort of adapted it over the years to make it my own. So here's what I do. I take this almond milk, I mean this almond pulp, and I add about two tablespoons of ground flaxseed and I add two tablespoons of chia seed, 
Both are really high in fiber and essential fatty acids. I put a little salt and about a tablespoon or a tablespoon and a half of olive oil. And then finally, a um, tablespoon or less of honey. All right, then I mix it all together. And I'm gonna use a dehydrator for these crackers. For people who are really into the raw thing, you can keep this whole process on the raw side. But if you don't have a dehydrator, it's fine to use your oven. Just bake them at a low temperature. Uh, I haven't done, I, I usually always do them in my dehydrator, but if I were to do them in the oven, I would do them probably at about 225 degrees and I, I might bake them for about an hour. So you'll just have to see uh, what works best for you. The dehydrator is wonderful because I love how it just evenly um, dries out the crackers and they're just the perfect consistency. So then I've prepared this little tray here with a little sheet of plastic wrap. It just makes it really easy to roll these out. And I have a top sheet of plastic. And what I usually do first is I sort of push it into a shape that's gonna make it easier to roll out. So since my hands are still clean, I just push that out. Make a little bit of a, a square. Then I cover it up. And you could use a, a glass. I used like to use a rolling pin just to roll it out to get a nice even thickness. And I roll it to about, I'd say an eighth of an inch thick. These look really yummy and, and seedy. I gotta tell you, these crackers don't last two days in our house. It's crazy. I'll, I'll put them in, um, in a glass Tupperware and the next day, it's, I can't even find them because they've been eaten. So I'm just folding this over because I really like to get a clean edge so that when I'm cutting the crackers, it just makes them more square-like. You could also freeform these crackers if you didn't run, roll them out and just shape them into little rounds. Uh, you can do whatever shapes you want, really. I've made little leaf shapes with cookie cutters. Anyway, that looks perfect. And then I'll usually use a pizza cutter or a knife just to score the dough. And I'm just cutting them into strips right now and then I'll cut them into squares. And again, you really could do any size that you want. Now from here, obviously you wouldn't bake it on plastic wrap. So you could flip that onto another um, baking pan lined with parchment paper or something. Or what I do is I flip it onto my dehydrator sheet. And this just makes it this process really easy for me. Now the crackers are ready to go in the dehydrator. I put them in at about 110 degrees and usually I'll just let them sit in there overnight. So maybe 10, 12 hours. And then we're good to go. So hopefully that inspired you to try making almond milk on your own. Take good care, eat well, and enjoy your day.